Hello, welcome back to Brenda Sushi Life Noting. In this episode, I'm going to do a little bit of improv. Um, I'm gonna touch like uh, the basic stuff again, like uh, being able to resample curve, maybe from grease pencil, and kind of basically replicating what Blender Array modifier and curve modifier do, but do it inside SphereShop because you can do more actually. Um, with Array modifier and curve modifier, you kind of it's kind of doing uh, the thing but you kind of limit it as well in in that respect so like a you know with array um, you can duplicate objects like that okay which is nice and perhaps you want to have some kind of uh, different objects maybe I duplicate this guy and then make it smaller so this guy is becoming like the in-between, um, let's say, this is going to be, okay, this is cube, cube one, and yeah, I'll scale it smaller and apply the scale, it should update. Hmm, yeah, see, even with array modifier, probably cannot have like a different scale of objects you need to maintain like a like the same kind of scaling or oh, actually you can but you know if you make something like this and then you create an another array and duplicate it like that okay that's kind of nice and you can make like a curve that's kind of um, controlling this let's try object selector select our grease pencil polyline viewer and we have our curve and if we use like curve modifier here in the z-axis so that's kind of kind of working okay to a certain extent but I like to be able to do more um, that's kind of like the basic idea if you want to maybe you want to have like a different size and then you, you kind of wanna arrange the spacing a little bit more so that's something that I've kind of thinking how to do it um, let's reload let's start with a basic one you know just like a start with a circle maybe maybe we want to make some kind of a beads kind of design um, so we have a circle, but the circle itself, you know, if we if we want to have like a multiple beads in different size, maybe we want to be able to kind of more have like a dynamics uh, resembling. So for that, I often use uh, vector interpolation, and with vector interpolations, we can interpolate um, whatever we pipe in um, into this guy. So often, what I did is to use a range float count between 0 and 1 and this actually give um, give us a way to kind of dynamically change the, the resampling and based on the, the length of the, the curve for example so I'm gonna save this real quick so this is like a resampling advanced kind of advanced because we start to think about it instead of um, just uh, playing around so let's see this is a circle and maybe we want to measure the length so based on the length use a scripted node and find a path length I, I like this uh, path length script node it's very very helpful basically allowing you to just do that so now no matter how small your circle or how big 
the resampling will be done dynamically. So we can also add this math, kind of uh, give a certain ratio. So you can see now, you know, we don't um, no matter how I scale the radius, the distance between the points is more or less the same. There must be like a little bit of math that I didn't do here. Um, there's some kind of ratio that can give us like a perfect um, arrangement of circle, no matter what scale we, we give it. Okay, so if we actually use um, polyline, we should get a curve that's kind of like a circle, like almost like circular, except that it's always open because we are using vector interpolations. Um, and we probably want to close it, so we have that option. And turn it into B-spline if we want to like smooth kind of curve. But I don't, need, I don't need to do that for now. What I want to do now is to create like a arrangement of beads. Um, Sphere Chalk actually have a way to do that using the edge uh, duplicate objects along edge. This guy is actually very very useful. If for example instead of using this range float, if you are using like a random number and kind of generating more random, more or less like randomized points along the curve, this duplicate along Duplicate objects along edge can help you to do that. Um, it's gonna scale the objects based on the length of the edge. Um, maybe that's actually for the next one. For this one, we're just gonna um, instance some bits on every point of the object. So we have our curves and we can see the points. We simply now use, use the points to place our bits. I'm gonna use icosphere for that, for our beads. So icosphere looks almost like a sphere. Um, we can arrange the radius, uh, change the radius and randomize it if you like. But we can simply use the points plug into the matrix to arrange the beads. And if you want to control the beads rotations a little bit better, you can always use the the matrix rotation one is actually just plug that into the angle that's kind of work most of the time and now you can see that no matter how we scale our circle we should get like a nice even arrangement of the beads kind of always because this one doesn't give you maybe I need to kind of change the number of vertices as well as we scale the the beads. Anyway, that's an idea. And what else can we do next? Um, maybe maybe arrange the beads a little bit more like that. Add more resolutions. So that's nice, you know. Small, big. You still get like nice arrangement. And the next thing you can do is just to give it a some kind of color. So I often use viewer draw, but uh, for final result, you tend to want to use viewer bmesh. And it decided to restart itself. I know that I expect that to happen, but anyway, it's my computer. I'll reopen the blend real quick. I think viewer. Maybe viewer bmesh use uh, like a big memory and oftentimes it crashes. Viewer bmesh. Plug that in. Plug this guy in. And matrix like that. By doing this, we're actually um, generating uh, multiple objects. If you look at it in the outliner, see? You can turn it into a single object if you merge it, but if once you merge it, you cannot uh, 
you kind of have a different way to control the color. For now, I like to do it this way because we can easily kind of uh, give a material to an object and assign it to every single one and then turn on object color. And now you can colorize every single object individually. So that's a quick way to do it. I think this is really good, even though it's like a simple com uh, concept, I did this many many times, it's still kind of nice way to explain um, a lot of programming theories. So now we are playing with the hue once again. If you want to control the hue of every object, now we have like 46 objects. Let's just use a random number for the hue. The hue should be between uh, 0 and 1, so the size should be the same number as the objects, 46. Plug into the hue, now we have random objects with random color. This looks, this reminds me of the, like a gem, the emerald gem in a, in a Sonic game, Sonic the Hedgehog. It's kind of nice. Maybe give it like a glass material in cycles if you like to do that okay now we have this what's what can we do next we can randomize this you can even if you use like a list shift list shift is kind of nice it works really well for color you can kind of shift color easily like so so the color itself doesn't change it's just being shifted and if you want to make this a little bit more procedural, Remem remember that all numbers are all interconnected and they, are, they need some kind of dependency. For example, if you change the number of objects, we want to change the number of size as well. That's why I, I often use list length. Just get the, the length of the objects and plug this into the size. If this gives you error, that's because um, we need to know what value we plug in. I often use the Stethoscope app to check what it is exactly. See, it's, it needs to be on level 0, now it should be correct. No matter um, if we change the, the circle, this is going to update dynamically, you see, you see in the outliner here. And this is actually pretty amazing. Uh, Spherechalk kind of works together with Blender to create this kind of uh, system. Um, so yeah, you can definitely give like a really really make like really interesting setup um, using Spherechalk. This is only touching the basic really and I did this many many times. Um, you can do more here like um, maybe randomize input vertices. You know I often do this. I'm actually randomizing the circle now. And the cool thing about this is if I'm doing doing it correctly no matter how weird the circle is you know like no matter how you randomize it the resampling will always take care of the the beads sort of um, oh actually I should do this before this guy so that's that's what I was talking about I think I accidentally turned off this guy okay, sorry Here we go. See? No matter how random, the beats and the resampling will take care of uh, this setup. Oh, that's when this guy is a bit off. Maybe I need to use uh, some kind of uh, better interpolation. Maybe cubic linear. Cubic interpolation gives you a nicer, smoother interpolation or oh, actually turn on turn on cyclic as well that's actually important because we want it to be connected Maybe that's a little bit better we can go back to the circle and change the arrangement once again uh, 
and instead of random input you can also use the vector noise this guy is very very interesting okay I want to show you another branching here of the same thing you can simply use a shift and then drag here you get a single dots there to connect the two so next time you want to make changes you can just pipe it in one time into that guy so in this case it's generating this uh, random noise and we can use vector math and kind of scale this up there you go this is the, the infamous uh, snake effects that I did very very often using Spreadshop you might be surprised uh, that you can do this quite easily now normally it will take uh, some programming to do this and how, how this how does this work it's uh, basically the secret is this vector noise and this uh, circle arrangement because circles kind of have like a like a distance between every points and then so it's like a line you can easily generate something like this um, hard to explain easy to make okay so this is um, I guess I can stop right here uh, before I go a little bit too crazy but I think the hard part is if if we want to make the beats in random size and then to make this is something that I'm still thinking how to do it if you want to have like a random size of beads that's mean you have like a different distance along along the curve um, if you kind of make the beads to run in a just like linearly just like a single line it's easy actually you start you can kind of measure it and accumulate the value and that way you can get the length and once you get the length you can kind of turn it back into like a proper circle or curve whatever but I think the secret is there and then you only need to use um, edge duplicate along edge I think that that will help you to accomplish beads with a different size for now I'm pretty happy with this I gonna turn on the curve once again so we have we actually have curve here I'll make this the beads uh, less okay we have like a you can see the curve now give it a different color black color and maybe different color you know bright color so there you go that's uh, our beads and curve being generated procedurally and if you make changes to the seed it will give you a different result every time okay so hopefully this is useful um, it's a lot of concepts I just try to put it together it's a uh, it's kind of easy but um, actually very important each one of the concepts should take you further I guess um, try if you want to do something more maybe try to maybe use the grease pencil to make this kind of setup um, just to play around with other than that um, if you have any question let me know in the comment section below and thanks again for tuning in I'll see you in the next video